That's enough, enough shenanigans for one day. So, doing something pretty unusual for me. First time I've ever painted on camera with talking. I've uh, done a few silent videos, sped them up about 20,000 times is my average <laughs> for speed. Um, but now I'm just going to do a video that's in real time and hope to give a little insight into my working process, but also to do a product review of sorts of these things that I found Rob Ross base coat value pack. In fact, before I crack this package open, I want to get a picture on my still camera because I really like the way they package this. Uh, this was found at a antique store slash thrift store in southern Delaware uh, on a road trip this past summer. We stopped in a place that looked basically like a farm supply warehouse, um, kind of in the middle of nowhere. And they had a lot of clothes. I found a nice baseball cap with my first initial on it, on a baseball. And then I found this, just we were waiting in line by the checkout and they had a glass case of other oddities and, and knickknacks. And what do you know, the Bob Ross base coat value pack uh, was for sale. And I've never, I've never seen these before. I have seen a fair number of Bob Ross videos and I know he starts pretty much every painting with a, a layer of uh, either liquid white or all I knew about was really liquid white. And now I realize that he's got liquid clear and liquid black. I'm going to go ahead and crack this open. I don't know how, uh, how rare these are, but I'm suddenly a little nervous to ruin the limited edition packaging. I don't think it's limited edition. But yeah, here's the liquid black. And these are oil paint, even though they look like they're in tubes that you'd find uh, acrylics or inks or something. This is liquid white. I'm gonna have to keep tapping my camera screen to get these to focus, but that's the one he, he uses most of the time. Uh, this is liquid clear. When I first saw the uh, box of these, I thought there was like a liquid yellow ground, which would be pretty wild to, to start a bunch of paintings on, on bright yellow. But no, it's uh, liquid clear. I guess it's that color because these are all linseed oil based, I'm assuming. And that's the color of linseed oil. Uh, and then that just comes with uh, a fourth bottle that's brush cleaner and conditioner to condition your brushes. Uh, I probably won't be using much of that. So this is kind of cool. This, I, I do really like the uh, hand-drawn label. $12, that's how much I spent on this stuff, which I don't know if that was a good deal or not. I did some Googling uh, or just searching for other YouTube videos about this stuff. And pretty much everyone who's done a video about them has a giant tin, which is probably a lot more cost effective if I had to guess. But this is what I've got. And uh, for those who don't know, I know he'll cover his entire canvas with uh, a very thin layer of, of one of these. And it lets him paint wet on wet. Yeah, it's very different from the way I typically work. And uh, so I'm, I'm not sure what to expect. I am eager to try out a, a very new different process because I think it's good to, to change up your way of doing things. And I have been feeling in a, a little bit of a, a, a rut with my usual way of working, which I'll, I'll probably get into, I like drawing first, having a plan, 
but not too much of a plan. I'm going to give an honest review of these. Not that I'm going to be an expert in using them after one painting, but I know my way around oil paint enough where I think I can be a judge of whether these are at least useful for me. I don't know if it'll apply to you, but maybe, maybe you'll enjoy this video regardless. So just got a little nice and sparkly plastic cup here and I'm going to start by just pouring some of this liquid white into it. It looked like it was all separated when I first opened it, like clear at the top, uh, more pigment at the bottom, but after a couple shakes, it seems evenly dispersed. Maybe I should read the instructions. Wet on wet painting technique. Paint is dependent on a wet surface to work into. Liquid white is a very slow drying oil paint designed to provide a proper oil painting surface. Liquid white is also used to thin other colors for application over thicker paint. Apply a thin, even coat, long horizontal and vertical strokes of liquid white over the entire surface area using a Bob Ross natural bristle brush. I don't have one of those. Do not allow the liquid white to dry before you begin painting. Mix well before using and thin only with Bob Ross odorless thinner. <laughs> I don't have that either. Non toxic. Okay, suddenly a bit nervous. I don't usually talk on camera like this. Yesterday, me and my friend Oscar recorded a podcast for the first time. That wasn't yesterday. Saturday. Two days ago. And it was really fun. And it made me realize that uh, talking, just trying to be natural, is uh, not that scary. It just requires the right frame of mind. All right, I gotta stop stalling here and actually do this. Here's my plan. <laughs> uh, I don't know exactly what I'm going to paint yet. I'm hoping these liquid color base coats will just inspire me to do something that I, I wouldn't ordinarily do. Uh, whether it's any good or not, well, I guess we'll find out. But just in terms of applying the base coat, I am going to try to used at least two of them, the black and the white, maybe a little clear somewhere to create a little bit of a, uh, like a value based structure to the composition, like a little lighter here, or maybe light spot and then dark around it. I've seen one or two Bob Ross episodes where he did that. He didn't just, uh, cover the entire thing with liquid white or liquid black. He, he kind of separated it into two areas. So I'm going to give that a try. Starting probably with the liquid white, because that's the classic. Oh, great. It's one of these child-proof locks. I, I hate it when art supplies do this, but I get that it's important. I uh, hope I can actually unscrew this on camera. Oh, okay. It wasn't so bad. Windsor and Newton, you're a prime offender of this. You, you got to get better child safe things. Those things break all the time and you can't get it open without cracking the plastic lid off. All right. I, everything I've heard about these say you need very little, but I've got a pretty big canvas here. So I'm going to start just with that and we'll see. It's a very odd, <laughs> odd consistency. For oil paint, it's like kind of a bit, bit goopy. I'm going to see if I can get my microphone a little more out of the way. This is a bit awkward. It goes on nice and silky smooth. So I, I had this idea in mind of a, a rower and a canoe, uh, even though it's kind of the domain of Peter Doig, famous contemporary artist uh, who, who's known for his canoe and boater pictures. But, you know, I had an idea of that theme that's a little different. I was going to make somebody whose canoe is uh, like an extension of their body, like a uh, anthropomorphic... I don't know if that's the right word, but a canoe that kind of morphs out of their skin, a little bit of like body horror element. So that's sort of what I'm uh, imagining this as, like kind of a, a serene but foggy seascape, like a, a Scottish 
lock maybe. Um, but with this strange, like cryptozoologist, <laughs> what's the word? Crypt cryptid. That's the word I was looking for. A cryptid of a person who, or a creature who has a boat made of their own flesh. Um, so I might want a little more of this liquid white down here. I don't know if this is, <laughs> you probably can't see me painting this white onto white at all. So I'll probably just end up bailing on this idea and, and painting a classic Bob Ross landscape. <laughs> because uh, I have a sinking suspicion that's pretty much all these paints are good for. These base coats, rather. God, these things suck. I think I got it open, but it's... Oh, you know, I should be shaking it, too. Vlogging is hard work. It's like I'm an extremely antisocial person, so... Totally content to just sit for hours and not say a word to another soul. But this kind of means I, I'm alone, but I'm still trying to talk to somebody, even though they're not actually here. It's not bad, though. I could get used to it. Fuck this one. <laughs> this one's way worse than the liquid white was. Uh, just jiggling it. Try to loosen it that way. Oh, fucking finally. Pouring some of this out. Liquid black. I'm gonna try to channel Bob Ross by using a nice big brush for this one. There it is mixing with the white I put down earlier. I need some more already. This goes fast. <laughs> there was a clump in there that definitely wasn't liquid. Uh, I have a bad feeling about this liquid black. It's not, it's either gonna be really too thick where this clump is or, it's like who, <laughs> who would put a ton of black oil paint on a picture before they start and then expect to make it anything other than maybe a super dark, like a forest scene or something. I guess that's, Bob Ross does a lot of those. Or he did a lot of those. I guess we're just making a, a portal. <laughs> I don't want to get too into any any controversy. Hey, that looks kind of cool on the my phone screen. Looks like a kid in a horror movie possessed by the devil and, and drawing rings obsessively. Maybe I'm done. Uh, but I was about to say about controversies. There's apparently a bit of a controversy in regards to the Bob Ross estate. His uh, I don't know how how many children he has. I know there was there is one son of Bob Ross who uh, I believe is a painter himself and is upset that a company, the very company that makes Bob Ross oil paint products, has been using uh, Bob's likeness. And name, of course, to uh, to sell products. And I don't think any of the ex existing members of the Bob Ross family are uh, receiving any part of that. And, you know, I don't know what business deal <laughs> someone worked out that uh, created that arrangement. But I'm kind of, kind of ambivalent about the uh, legality of that. It's just a name, and there's been many other cases of artists having their names used and abused for uh, monetary gain. There's a brand of paint called uh, Van Gogh paint. 
unless I'm mistaken, the artist Vincent Van Gogh was not a art supply magnate <laughs> when he was alive. He was basically penniless and died totally unknown. So uh, someone just came along and said, hey, we'll, we'll call our paint Van Gogh and get that name recognition. I feel like Bob Ross, he's much more recent figure, of course, but it's kind of the same thing. Now, what the hell am I, <laughs> I doing with this? <laughs> this might have been a huge mistake. But I should, uh, I should try to start finding some sort of image in this. It's going to be awfully boring if it's just a uh, circle in the night in a dark sky. So I'm going to try to maybe add some clouds. We're going off script here. Bob Ross would be uh, rolling in his grave. Sorry, Bob. But I think I need some actual paint now. We've got the... <laughs> liquid white and liquid black in a fairly random arrangement. Here's what I'm going to do. Actually wipe some of this away because I think I might have put too much. And it's also a way to get it a little more smooth. <laughs> what have I become? my sweetest friends. So when my, my vision of this like boater, there was, there are, like reeds and stuff over here. They're not gonna just be gray, but I wanna start thinking about what this is actually gonna look like. Let's see, maybe a canoe of sorts. Oh shit, I forgot to talk into the mic. White, gray, yellow, red, blue. Primary colors plus white. So let's see if we can turn this into something. Cause I'm, uh, I'm feeling skeptical. So I said I wanted some like rocks or reeds over here. I think this is actually the Bob Ross branded palette knife. I honestly like working with the palette knife better. Really makes some texture. You know, I feel like I can make a nice little hut a house. I've been plugging away at the edges where the liquid black is and I'm feeling kind of frustrated already. So let's go where the there's more of the white, although it's more of a liquid gray at this point. Can we make it look like there's a guy with ra rowing a boat here? Let's let's see. I don't really know how you <laughs> row a boat, so I'm uh guessing a little bit. I've been in a couple canoes and kayaks, but as far as being able to make up the pose without a reference, uh, it's a little trickier. Let's see, I need to act it out. <laughs> if you're, you've got an oar, hmm, oh, okay. One hand can be down holding the this part of the oar, the other will be up, and I think uh, going like this. So the hand will be upturned. Whenever I'm trying to make up like a semi-complex figure doing something, it helps to actually like act it out. But all right, that's serviceable. Um, I'm not really sure where the light's coming from in this weird little scene yet. I should have considered this first, but it's it's a hazy, overcast day. 
I said Scotland earlier, but I don't know. I've never been to Scotland, and I just associate it with foggy lakes and and ponds. I'm not sure if it's going to be clear my kind of idea for this painting of the the canoe actually being stretched with human skin, but um, we'll see. Let's add that or... The ore could also be skin colored. Something a little a little creepy about this idea, don't you think? Skin ore, skin canoe. It sounds a bit sexual, but I don't I don't mean it that way. All right, uh, let's just mean some some shadows in here to make make sense of this weird person. Seems like it's going to be a very gray painting. All right, here goes nothing. The idea is light coming from the right. Create a little shoulder blade here. I'm having a little bit of fun now. Now that there's a figure in the mix, it kind of all has a bit of a focal point. That's my bias. I, I like figurative art. I like telling stories about people and bizarre situations and ghosts and things that relate to to humans. But I already feel like this is not going to be nearly as like high fidelity as the paintings I make my usual way, but that's okay. Uh, it's going to be something different. Got to think about the pose of a holding an oar again. Let's see, finger is going this way, a thumb type thing. Okay, good enough. And I can always go back into this uh, when it's dry and then try to clean it up, but it'd be great if I could have a totally finished painting in one, one session. If I could do that, make every painting only take a couple hours, uh, I'd, I'd switch to the Bob Ross technique. I'm just kidding. I, I like the way I figured out what works for me. And uh, who cares if it's slow? I can do a few paintings a year. It's not like they're selling anyway. All right. Um, it's kind of weird. I'm looking to see how this looks on the phone screen, which doesn't doesn't tell me a lot, but... I feel like to make it <laughs> extra clear that the canoe is like an extension of the the person's body, I need to like put maybe feet. That's that's really weird, but uh, I don't know how else to make it a little more like creepy and and body like. The neighbors are having work done on their house and it, the people working on it sound like they keep playing the song Take My Breath Away by Berlin as made famous by the Top Gun soundtrack, but it's just on repeat. And it can't be that. Why would these construction guys be listening to that over and over? It doesn't, doesn't make any sense. This guy's getting a bit thick. There is something nice about the fact that the whole canvas is like this wet surface because that is one of my real pet peeves about working on regular acrylic gesso, how it, how it dries everything up and it's hard to make the paint look nice and rich, uh, which is the main reason I, I use what I use normally, which is oil ground. I, I go through so many tubs of that stuff because I like the feeling of painting on an oily surface, but I let it completely dry before I start working. That's that's the difference. This is like slippy, slidey, like painting on a slip and slide, <laughs> but kind of interesting at the same time. This is bizarre. This guy is just doing the splits in water, which uh, when I envisioned this scene is is not how I envisioned it. And it's a bit silly. Maybe, maybe we're not gonna do that. But it's funny. Sometimes funny is is worth pursuing. I'm like frustrated by the the paint staying like 
washed out and gray, which is the whole reason I started this way is, is to get that effect, but I, I don't really like that. It makes everything kind of chalky and faded. All right, time to, to bring this water line up, I guess. Hmm. It, it literally just looks like a guy in a kayak. Should have planned this out a little bit better, but uh, hey, we're this is the creative process, guys. The way I love to make any kind of art, whether it's visual art or music, even like when I used to write creatively a bit more, which is something I don't really do unless you count lyrics occasionally. Um, but it's always just to, to let the subconscious take control. I, I hate just coming up with a plan and executing it, which is kind of why I'm a little frustrated by this already. Cause I, I did say I had this plan and now I'm executing it and it just feels a bit lifeless, too predictable. So maybe what I need is to, to take it on a real left turn throw a wrench into the gears so that I can't predict where it's going anymore. But how? One of my favorite ways to do that is just to flip it around, but uh, that's not going to make much sense like this, is it? Is it? Nah. We'll keep trucking. Let's just say we'll, we'll try to finish this up. You know what I'm suddenly seeing is uh, it looks like we're in like a underwater tunnel. Like it's a little more interesting than just like a outdoor scene, at least to my brain right now. I, I like the way that looked. A little bit of classic one-point perspective action, although just completely freehand. A vanishing point is somewhere on a hypothetical horizon in the distance, and all these lines are supposed to be heading to it because they're the bricks lining the inside of this tunnel. This kind of looks like some interesting graffiti on the side. That's kind of cool. Hmm. <laughs> This, this, the action of this guy doing the splits is just too comical to me, but I don't know how to get away from it. Worst case scenario is he's just in a regular old kayak and, and no one has to know that I had the silly idea that it would be a kayak made of skin. I'll just bail on that particular idea. Can the palette knife give us some uh, convincing brick textures? Let's, let's try. I don't think they should be that red though. We're going back to the brush. That, I wasn't really feeling that. That smear of orange I put on the wall kind of looks like a bit of a reflection. If these bricks are super shiny, maybe that's our, uh, our canoers. Is canoeer a word? I, I, I keep for hesitating every time I try to describe this guy. Our, our boater. Uh, that's their reflection on the wall, possibly. We're adding more small bricks. I keep thinking of ways this all would be so much easier if I was painting the way I, I normally do, which would be just like drawing all this stuff, all the outlines in black ink, and then slapping some transparent colors on it. And, and then I can like with a rag or a really dirty old paintbrush, just like kind of etch in some texture of bricks. And it's, it's so easy. And it, to me, it looks so good. And it's, uh, Let's just say I, I paint 
exclusively that way when I'm making my own work uh, for a reason. It's just kind of everything I want to do. It makes it easy. This is the complete opposite. I am, I'm struggling here. My brushes are all dirty. <laughs> this palette's disgusting. This, this painting is pretty disgusting. Uh, and I'm just, I'm just lost. Damn. Let's just look in the camera. Looks like shit. You know, let's just go ahead and, and add some graffiti or something. Why are we doing all this work making pristine bricks when there just could be a bunch of paint on the walls? As fitting for a painting that uh, feels like trash right now, I'm just going to fill up this space with garbage. Seems appropriate. I'm thinking just like wooden pallets and, and boxes. Hooey. Like really feel like I need a reset on this whole, whole process, but we've, we've already come t too far. I'm not going to just let it dry for three days and, and try to save it later. We gotta, we gotta finish it right now. Let me show for the camera. This is, this is the mess we're in. Let's, uh, let's take our blue and see if we can add a little bit of like, maybe a city some hazy buildings. I was at the beach in Northwest Indiana where you can see the, all the industry that is along Lake Michigan heading towards Gary. They're big smokestacks. It's kind of inspiring this right now. Some billowing smokestacks over the water. Very dystopian. We're using this distant background stuff to try to define the edges of our figure a little more. I don't think this is really focused too well on the camera, but it really doesn't matter at this point. I want to add some uh, vegetation, like some reeds. Sorry for the interruption there. I need to uh, do a quick hard reset on my fucking Nasty paintbrushes. Man, oh man. This is rough. <laughs> I feel completely, completely out of my element. But that's all right. Palette knife on its side is actually a pretty great way to make vegetation. A paintbrush can't really get that crisp. That's that's inspiring me a little bit right there, just how how easy it was to make a bunch of reeds sticking out of I really feel like I haven't utilized any of the actual benefits of Bob Ross paint the uh, liquid base coats. I've only made it far harder on myself to to create the type of scene I want to paint. I wish I better remembered how th those factories looked. And I did a sketch too. <laughs> I, I just remembered something. There were these uh, power lines that kind of went up. They had a tower. Man, I've been spoiled by actually using pens and, and ink drawing in my paintings. This makes it 
pretty impossible. Close enough. <laughs> I feel so like such an amateur. All this stuff looks not looking. It's not looking the way I I'm intending. Is there beauty in that? Maybe, but all I'm feeling is is rage. <laughs> All right, let's, I'm going to, I'm going to try to call this a day for, for at least the first session. Maybe I'll return to it later, but, um, kind of felt like a waste of a canvas. I'll, I might just end up painting over this if I'm being honest, but it's just so silly. Why is this guy... Why does he look like this? I'm getting quiet because I'm just, I don't know, ran out of things to say. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Not one of my finer moments, but I really, <laughs> I don't know what to do to it. I think the moral here was, at least for me, I don't like liquid base coats for oil painting. They just get in the way. If I want something to be smoothly blended, I can create that effect myself strategically, like where I want it. It was kind of nice to have a background that has this light thing, but yeah, it's just, just not, <laughs> just didn't work. Um, but I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I I broke the ice with doing one of these uh, talking to the camera when I'm by myself things. I might try to do more. But for now, I think this painting is uh, headed to the reuse pile, meaning put my usual oil ground over the top and, and paint something I actually like over it. But we'll see. I'll let it sit for at least a couple days. Uh, let it dry. Might even do a, a part two, but I think I can can do this concept better differently. Sorry if this video was just a lot of me saying how uh, this isn't as good as the way I would normally do it, because I can already hear that. That's going to sound really annoying when I go back and watch this footage. But hey, I'm just being honest just living my truth. All right, Dylan out. Thanks for watching. This is a, a bad hand signal in the UK, isn't it? Maybe I should have just said, thanks for watching. <laughs>